Okay, so I, I do want to comment one comment about uh, this week's Parsha, about actually two individuals, two individuals that play a major role in this week's Parsha. And a lot of times we, we tend to overlook it and to oversee them. And the truth is when you try to take a deeper look into these two individuals' life, you realize that they've been involved with the Jewish people for quite some time. And they represent something that we have to deal with every single generation. Who are the two people that I want to deal with is Datan and Aviram. Datan and Aviram are very mysterious characters. It's not clear to us who exactly they are, but right away in the beginning of the parsha, it says, Vaikach koach ben Yitzar ben Kiat ben Lavi, Vedatan ve'aviram b'nei Eliyav. And, and Datan and, and, uh, and Aviram, the sons of Eliyav, and they stood in front of Moshe. Who are these Datan and Aviram? And the truth is that they play such an integral role and I could prove to you that they play an integral role. First of all, I understand that Korach wanted the, the kehuna. He wanted to be the head of the Shevet. I understand the, the 250 Sanhedrin, they wanted to be the leaders. But who are Datan Ve'avira from Shevet Ruvain? What do they represent? And, and I know that they played such an integral role because in Parshas Pinchas, when there was a Magefa and they counted everybody up, if you look at the Psukim over there, it says, and then it stops and it says, This is Datan and Aviram that went against Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu calls them out in Parshas uh, Pinchas and then he says, and the, the ground opened up and swallowed them up. And the children of Korach did not pass away. So we see that Moshe Rabbeinu calls them out not only that, also at the end, in Parshas, in Sefer Devarim, in Parakut Alf, Moshe Rabbeinu calls them out. Asher asa ledasan v'aviram b'nei Eliyah b'nei Ruvain. Asher patzdar, it says, we see that constantly Moshe Rabbeinu is calling out dat, datan v'aviram, dasan and aviram, that they're the ones who spread this whole machlokas. And we need to understand who exactly they are. And the... Or a Chaim Akadosh, actually. Also, by the way, David Amelech in Tehillim in Perkov Vav, when he mentions the Machlokas, he mentions only Dasan and Avira. We see that they play an important role. The Or Chaim Akadosh in, uh, in Parshas Pinchas brings out that Dasan and Avira were the cause for the whole Machlokas. They were the ones who instigated it. They're the ones who got Korach involved. They're the ones who got the Sanhedrin involved. They're the ones who got the entire Jewish people involved. And sometimes in Jewish life, you have people who instigate machlokas for the sake of machlokas. And the truth is that if you look at Rashi, and, you, and I, I started looking, where does Datan and Aviram, Datan and Aviram, where do they appear throughout the story of Yetzias Mitzrayim? They do not just pop up in Parshas Korach. Where do we know that they appear? We know the, fam- the first time they appear is the famous story of Moshe Rabbeinu when he sees two people fighting. And who are the two people that are fighting, right? And he killed the Mitzri the day before. The next day he sees two people fighting and he says, Rasha, lama take esrecha. And who are the two people? Shtei anashim nitzim, says Rashi. Anashim, shtei anashim ivrim, dasan ve'aviram, heim shehotiru minaman. Rashi says it's dasan and aviram and they're the ones that in the future they left over the man when Moshe Rabbeinu said, you're not allowed to leave anything for the next day. They're the ones who left over for the next day. Why is, why is uh, Rashi emphasizing that right over here? Not only that, when Moshe Rabbeinu comes out of, what, 80 years later, when he comes back to save the Jewish people and he comes out of Paro's palace and, and he said, let my people go. And Paro said, I'm not going to let them go. In fact, there's going to be more work and more work. And it says that there were people who greeted him when he walked out of the palace, there are two people who came up to them and said, how dare you go to Paro and mess us over, and because of you, we're even more messed over than we were in the beginning. Says Rashi over there, that was Dasan and Aviram. Dasan and Aviram are there constantly in the way of Moshe Rabbein, all the way when he killed the Mitzri, they're standing in his way, they try, and they told on him to paro. Only many years later did it say that the people who were trying to look for you, that they died. It's referring to Dustin and Aviram, and Rashi over there says that they became poor, and they lost their money. 
and then he comes back and they go in front of Moshe and they start complaining. And then they go out and they get the mun and they start complaining and they, and they leave it over and they don't believe. And now they start this whole machlokas with Korach. There's Dasan and Avira. And the Maral, based on the Medrash, brings down that HaKadosh Baruch Hu sometimes places, he places for us people who are there to be the counterbalance of the good that we're trying to influence on the world. And that is our avoda. And it's brought down in the Medrash, Medrash in Tehillim, that after the Miraglin, in last week's Parsha, there was a group of people who said, let's go back to Mitzrayim. It's time to go back to Mitzrayim. When the Miraglin came back, it says, Vayomru ish el achiv nisna rosh v'nashuva Mitzrayim. Who is ish el achiv? It was Dasan and Aviram as well. So they're mamish playing a role throughout the entire, the entire process. And says the Maharal, and I'm quoting you this Maharal inside the Maharal in Gura Sashem Parakutes. He says, he says that Dasan and Avir from the beginning of time are there to oppose. You have Moshe and Aaron on one side that are the good leaders of the Jewish people. You have Dasan and Aviram on the other side who played an impactful leadership role in the Jewish people to counterbalance the good that Moshe and Aaron tried to say. And that's what they say, Kikasher, Am Yisrael was Zohar to have leaders like, Dasan, like Moshe and Aaron. Ze le'uma ze, ki harau le'uma satov tamid. HaKadosh Baruch Hu always gives us an equilibrium of choices between good and evil, even in our leadership, and even in the direction we want to go. And Dasan and Aviram were there as a counter to the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu. They played a significant role in it that they could sway the Jewish people, and they always would come in moments of weakness. When did the machlokas of Dasan and Aviram come into place? When the Jewish people just heard that they're staying in the desert for 40 years. 40 years they're staying in the desert. They're not going anywhere. They're going to stay here and they have to create a society. Everyone is frustrated. Everyone is a little bit depleted. That's when Dasan and Aviram come in. Things are not normal. Things are having a hard time. Uh, people are stuck home. People are bored. People are frustrated that we can't get back into the regular system. That's when people come in and they say, it's time to change the leadership. It's time to make a tremendous change. When everyone is frustrated, that's when the examples of Dasan and Aviram come in. And in a certain way, they represent something that we need to overcome. We see that Moshe Rabbeinu, when he turned to Korach, he turned to Korach with, with a soft word, Shimuna B'nai Levi. Please listen to me, the children of Levi. And he wants to turn to Korach V'adoso. And then he turns to Datan V'aviram. He tries to call them up, but they don't even want to go. When Moshe Rabbeinu gets all heated up, it says in the Pesukim, in this week's parsha that he walks directly to the tent of Dasan and Aviram, and he says, everyone move away from them. And the, the curse was actually on them more than it was on Korach. Korach was swayed by them. And these people have a koach to sway even tzaddikim. They have a koach to sway even righteous people, to tap into our, into our places that we desire kavod, where we desire success, where we desire uh, credit. And there are people who egg us on and they say, yeah, you need this. You de deserve this. And they're really egging themselves on. They want to be, they want to create a type of machlokas. And every generation is faced with people that are countering, they're going against the Jewish leadership. They're going against the, the, the good that we're trying to spread. And they're part of the Jewish people. They're part and parcel of the Jewish people. We don't know who they are. We should not be naming people, oh, that's Dasan and Aviram. Unless we know 100% for sure that it's people that are constantly trying to undermine anything that is good, anything of values. 
And then we need to know that who we're up against. And that's part of creating a perfect society. Part of creating a perfect society is understanding, yes, thank you, that there will be instigators throughout our society. There will be people who are trying to stop the music. We just heard the beautiful music from, from Charlie. And there are going to be people who are going to try to stop the music and stop the simcha and stop the, the optimistic look on life and the direction that we're trying to create and the change that we're trying to bring around and the social change. We're going to be calling people, let's go, it's time to move to Eretz Israel, it's time to unite. And there are going to be people who are going to say no. And they're going to bring around Machlokas and they're going to say, we want to be the leaders and we want to be this. There's going to be a... It's part and parcel of any Geula story. There are going to be people who are against the Geula that are part of Am Yisrael. And the way the grub brings us down, it's part of our final Geula. We have to deal with that as well. With the people who are against the Jewish leadership, they speak up against the Moshe and Aaron of that generation. We know Moshe v'Aaron b'cho'anav u'shmuel b'korei shmo dor dor v'dor shav. Every generation has its leaders. In that generation, it was represented by Moshe and Aaron. Their later generation, that it's Shmuel and Yiftach. Their later generation, that it's the Rabbanim and Gedolim of our generation. And there are sometimes instigators from within who try to undermine them. The Maral said there's always going to be a power struggle. We could choose who do we want to listen to? Who is our leader? Who is the leadership that we want to follow? And, and it raises real questions amongst Am Yisrael. Who do I want to follow? Because these instigators, they come with real tainas and they come with real opposition. And they're saying that their Moshe and Aaron got it all wrong. Moshe and Aaron are killing us. Moshe and Aaron are destroying the Jewish people. Moshe and Aaron are, are look, look, look what's happening because of Moshe and Aaron. And everyone is starting to hear that. And they want to listen to that. And sometimes it's easy to blame the leadership and to say, because of them, we're doing it all wrong. And our avoda, what we learn from the parsha of Korah, what we learn from the parsha of the machlokas, the terrible machlokas that came out of Korah, that it was instigated by the dasan and aviram of that generation. In every generation, there might be a dasan and aviram, somebody from within the Jewish people that wants to undermine the Jewish leadership, to say that it doesn't know what it's talking about. And our job is to obviously be independent thinkers. We're allowed to bring issues up. We're allowed to question. We're allowed to get into conversations with Rabbanim and ask for clarity, but not to be swayed by the Dasan and Aviram of the generation that are trying to get us against the Jewish leadership. They're trying to get us to not go into Eretz Yisrael. They're trying to get us to, to go against, to go back to Mitzrayim, to go back to our slavery. That's what they, they're trying to do in a certain way. They're saying, oh, come, we'll do this. And then we become slaves to other things. And that's really our avodah. That was the, the moment of chizik that I wanted to share with you today. I think it's something that's important for every single generation, also for our generation. And it's very unclear because we don't really know who is the Dasan and Avir. In that generation, they also didn't know. In that generation, they were also confused. When they complained to Moshe and Aaron, everyone's like, oh yeah, they have, a, they have a good taina. They're really complaining well against Moshe and Aaron. And people did not know. The, the Machlokas swept big parts of Am Yisrael and people were in real question as to who's right and who's wrong. And, our, and that's why we have a community. That's why we have a community. That's why we have a Rav, Rav Beryl Wine, who leads us, who has, who has a, a Sivara Yeshara, who sees the world in a, in a clean and a clear path and clear and clean uh, mahalach. And we ask our Rabbanim when we have questions, we build a relationship with, uh, with Rabbi Wine and with our rabbis in order to have that clarity so, to be able to, to see the right way. And I think that's something that's very important for our generation. I want to thank Charlie Katz for inspiring us with unbelievable music. I look forward to working together, maybe doing a, a musical educational program. I think it's going to be something that is, that is very amazing. Just, just going to spotlight you here a second because you're just so amazing. Oh, the whole mishpacha and Mrs. Katz. <laughs> and I don't know the name of Whitey. We got Whitey. I know you also have uh, Blackie over there. 
after one second, let me give you an unmute over there. But thank you so much for, for joining us. And it was really, really amazing. And we really enjoyed it. One second, I'll make sure to, oh, okay, we unmuted you. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, the, the woman over my left shoulder is Cindy, my wife, of course. Yes, that we know. But, but you have two dogs. You have a black one and a white one. That's right. And this, this one, this is Nappy, and he, he hates to be anywhere but on my lap. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, well you guys you, you put on a, a great show and we look forward to many more uh, musical performances Thank and uh, yeah, I would love to hear your full Simon and Garfunkel lineup it'll be great oh well we'll need a couple hours for that okay <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you everyone for joining us um, I'm going to, to put everything on unmute so that we could all say uh, goodbye to one another thank you so much really appreciate it and I look forward tomorrow we have a special program Special program uh, 